It's a dangerous game to play. Hi. I'm Mark Hidden, and I'm the catalyzer. Now, I think it's the first time I've ever actually said that in a video. Um, the reason I do videos now, uh, and it's taken me a long time to get to the point that I feel comfortable with who I am um, as a person, who I want to be online, and what it is that's important to me. And there's a lot of people that have been inspirational and helpful and really helping me feel okay about who I am. And in finding people that have been wrong about things and feeling okay with them, even though they're wrong about some things that I disagree with. And I think Dean Ismay has been very helpful in challenging me intellectually. And it doesn't mean I agree with him on everything, but I think his heart is in the right place. And I think a lot of people's hearts are in the right place. And to me, that's important. What is it that you want? So when I see anyone using fear-mongering lang language or othering lang language, if, if you will, um, I'm not going to be a happy camper. Um, if I find myself doing it and someone points it out, I, will, I like to think I will acknowledge that that was an um, invalid statement that I have made. And we kind of get tempted into doing it because it's the simple, simple answer. It's a simple out. Um, makes everything clean. I have major problems with the way we have engineered morality. Now, I do basically believe my best explanation for God is that God is a creation of human beings for the purposes of creating a, a greater sense of reality, to create a sense of awe in the un universe. Um, and then understanding and appreciating that awe, I think, is an important um, attribute to the humanities. Now, you may say, well, God actually exists. Well, when I think of anything, that, that thing I'm thinking of actually exists. It exists at least in my mind, and in my mind, that's good enough. So we can argue whether there's a tangible existence of God or if it's just a creation of the human imagination or an explanation for that part of the human imagination. Um, however you want to frame it. And there's, there's different ways of framing that idea. Um, but fear-mongering is probably my least desirable trait in someone because it's just basically trying to tell someone you need to believe this because your life or your soul is in jeopardy. I suppose it could be true. Um, but there is a consequence for believing that it is true. There is a price you pay, and that is an emotional price, and that could be an intellectual price, but you could pay a price for believing that. Now, if you believe it tentatively, meaning you're not sure that it's true, then at least you have, again, the same your same argument you applied to uh, the atheist being unfree, that you're being trapped from God would be that you're being trapped from the truth if you believe. But if you're open to the possibility you could be wrong, then you're not trapped. So um, there is a trap, an intellectual trap devised by that to say this is absolutely the truth. Um, and not realizing that we could be very fallible. And if we're not realizing we're fallible, then I'm uncomfortable with someone. I'm uncomfortable with it because I, I know they will go to no length. That there's nothing I can say to them. There's no, no amount of reason I can reason with them to say this is what we don't know. I think it would be nice if we could come to a point where we say we, what we don't know to be true. Um, and that's to me probably a more important question. What is it that we don't we know we don't know? 
Um, and I'm comfortable with the idea that I know I don't know that God exists. I only know, I only think I know that there's no empirical evidence for the God for God's existence. Now, I often joke, um, what's God's phone number? I'll just give him a call. Or what's God's phone number? I'll give her a call. What's God's phone number? I'll give it a call. It doesn't really matter, my point. But um, it God doesn't make itself empirically knowable. Is that intentional? And if it's intentional, why is it intentional? Why is it so important that God does not exist in an empirical sense? Now, people that don't agree with evolution or don't agree with um, evolutionary psychology, um, it's okay. But are you arguing from a standpoint of, I know something else to be true? Do you understand the arguments being presented in the evolutionary arg argument? Um, is it possible that we could have evolved from dead stuff? Um, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting claim, and it is an interesting line of thinking, even if you don't agree with it, even if you think it's not possible. Um, it is something that should be considered as a possibility um, because it's a very powerful argument. Now, one reason religion concerns me is I do believe there's a way to jump substrates, literally and figuratively. Um, however you want to look at it, jumping your substrate would mean leaving the biological body, in the sense creating a soul. Now, it's entirely an empirical argument, and which is falsifiable. Um, it hasn't been falsified, as far as I can tell. And, and it's funny to me that people are very fearful of that idea, that we could jump substrates, that we could take all the information within our brains and stick it into a computer. That would be jumping the substrate of the biology that our brain is now housed in, our thinking is now housed in. Now, that would totally violate the reason for our brains was to help for the survival of our biology. But if we jump substrates, then we would not be helping the survival of our biology. In an evolutionary sense, why is it that we would do this? I mean, we would actually be abandoning the DNA that helped get us there. We would be projecting ourselves out into the world, or into the universe, actually. And that would actually be the reason why we would do it. We would do it because we want to survive our biology. And I do believe that religion is a part of that desire to survive our biology. And I believe it's within in our grasp in a few gen generations at the most that we would have the technology to actually jump substrate. Now, I don't know convincing you of this being true is even important, um, but it does motivate me to reconsider the nature of our universe and the nature of our goals. Why? do we believe in God? Or why do we want to believe in God? What is it that we're trying to create? And I do take a very creative aspect to who I am. I am a creator. I am a creative of ideas. I am a creator of things. I create information. Now, it may be crappy information, but I still create it. It's still my creation. It's still my crap. Biology has been doing this for generations and generations creating more complex systems upon more complex systems until it finally created systems that were independent of the biology. A 747 is completely independent of biology. Now, is that the extended phenotype? Perhaps. But there is a creative process our creative instincts, our creative desires. It just makes sense that we would create God. And that's how I feel about it. And I'm not going to lie to you about it. That's how I feel. It just makes sense that we would create God. Um, does it make you a bad person if you believe in a God? No. No, it doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you believe in God. It, it's important for you that you don't think you created it or it wasn't created for you to believe in to give you a reason for existence. 
Now, that's not an atheistic argument. That's actually a, an argument for the existence of God, or I'm in describing why God exists and, and the nature of, of God. What is the nature of God? Now, if you believe the nature of God is something different, okay, okay right? I mean, that it would be your explanation for what God is. Um, and I think it's a freeing. I, I think it is just as freeing as a lot of ideas. It frees you of the obligations, but it creates a new ob obligation. You're responsible for everything. You're responsible for doing the best that you can do. Now, to be fair, we're given only what we're given. We can only do what we can do with what we have in our hands, what we have in our world, what we have so far. And that's what we're doing here. We're discussing where we want to go as a civilization, how we want to be as a civilization. And every, I mean, everything I try to do is to catalyze the idea that we are on, we're here together. Let's work it out the best systems that make us all feel as comfortable as we can. And I think friction is good. I like this friction. I like the fact that there is a group that calls themselves escaping from atheism. And I like the fact that Noel Plum takes it seriously and gives a serious response to that, that group. These are the kinds of conversations that I think are useful. Um, and this is the framework in which I think we can be the most useful. And so I want to put my two cents in, and that's why I have put my two cents in on this issue, and I hope that it can gain compounding interest. Okay. Thank you for watching. Um, keep up the good work, and I will continue to watch and listen and think about what you have to say. And um, I hope this is well-received. Thank you again.